Hey everyone, welcome to an introductory video on how to operate Gullfoss. Gullfoss is an intelligent automatic equalizer that improves clarity, detail, spatiality, and balance of your mix. At the core of Gullfoss is a computational model of human auditory perception that's able to take your mix and maximize the contained information that can be perceived. Now that all sounds really complex, but simply put, this computational model in Gullfoss just makes audio recordings sound better. You can use it as a master EQ, on buses, and even on individual tracks. So first let me give you a quick demonstration on how Gullfoss can improve the balance of a mix by recovering and boosting some frequencies and taming and suppressing other frequencies and unwanted resonances. Listen to how dull and boxy this mix is while Gullfoss is bypassed. So here Gullfoss is really helping to open up the mix and enhance the brightness and it's also tamed some of the mid-range resonances that were causing the bass and guitar to clash a bit. So next I'll explain each of the parameters and I'll show you how to create a good starting point when using Gullfoss. For all the complexity that Gullfoss has under the hood, its interface is exceptionally simple and easy to use. There are two primary parameters, tame and recover. Tame reduces dominating sound elements, and Recover boosts masked elements. The great thing about these is that they don't work against each other, they actually work in a complementary fashion, which means that you can recover and tame at the same time. One thing worth mentioning is that well-mixed material may only need small corrections in the 0-15% to range for Recover and Tame. It's tempting to jump up into the higher values to hear a more drastic result. However, drastic changes can often be overkill. There are also two secondary parameters, bias and brighten. We call them secondary because they don't do anything on their own. They only have an effect if the tame or recover parameters have been adjusted. Bias sets up a preference toward tame, which would be a negative bias, or recover, which would be a positive bias and Brighton adjusts the overall brightness of the applied changes. So many times I've told you. The boost parameter stands on its own, and it's what we call a virtual loudness control. It emulates how you would perceive the audio signal in a quieter or louder environment, but without actually changing the volume. Think of a Fletcher Munson curve, for example. The human ear is most sensitive to mid-range frequencies around 1 to 5 kHz, so more bass and treble is required at lower volumes to maintain equal loudness. As we hear louder sources, our ears require less bass and treble, so in short, the boost parameter can be used as a sound shaping tool to adjust the relative loudness of the bass and treble versus the mids, but under the hood, it's actually a whole lot more sophisticated than that. It's worth mentioning that Gullfoss performs about 300 EQ decisions per second, and it also maintains the overall loudness of your mix and doesn't mess with its dynamics. So there's no manual matching of your input and output levels, however you can still manually adjust the output gain here if you like. Gullfoss works better when it's fed more information about your mix. So placing it toward the end of your processing chain is a good starting point, because this is where the most sonic information will be. However, if you have any substantial dynamics processing, like bus compression or multiband compression, it's often a better option to place it before the dynamics processing. And Gullfoss isn't just for mastering either. You can do some really great things with it if you use it for bus processing or even on individual tracks. So using the example I demonstrated at the beginning of this video, let me show you how to arrive at a good starting point when using Gullfoss. <laughs> This is a mixed stereo track for mastering, so I don't have the ability to go in and adjust the individual tracks in the mix session and correct any unwanted resonances. Gullfoss is perfect for this kind of application. So to start, I'll set the tame and recover to 
When you adjust these parameters, there's two meters that you want to pay attention to, the bias meter on the left and the brighten meter at the bottom. Adjusting the tame and recover parameters alone can inherently add or reduce brightness in your mix. So here in the brighten meter, you can see that it's adding brightness already. I'll pull down the brighten parameter until the meter roughly gravitates around the origin point. This will ensure that the overall brightness of your mix is more or less maintained. Next, I'll properly balance the recover and tame by adjusting the bias parameter until the vertical bias meter, the one on the far left, roughly gravitates around the origin point as well. This ensures that the tame and recover have roughly the same amount of work to do. So this is a nice starting point for most sources, and then you can go back in and adjust the parameters to taste. So first, I'll play with the boost control for a bit more bass. And I'll tame down the recover a bit. And I want the mix a bit brighter, so I'll dial the brightness back in just a bit. And I'll dial back in some of that recover a bit now too. Maybe just a little less on the high end, and be careful how much you use the brighten and boost controls. These are global controls, so they affect everything, even if you haven't adjusted the recover, tame, or bias controls. So with Gulfoss in, it's a bit brighter and a bit more open sounding, and the mix is properly balanced, unlike the original, which was kind of dull and boxy sounding. So that's a brief overview of the Gulfoss user interface and how it can be used to improve and enhance the balance of a mix. If you'd like to purchase Gulfoss or you'd like to try it out for free, you can check it out at soundtheory.com. It's available for Windows and Mac OS. We hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.